everyone to the program. We kick off with a global threat, the coronavirus, and it appears the figures in Nigeria are growing. The latest confirmed COVID-19 figure in Nigeria is 40. That's according to the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC. Last night, the center confirmed four new cases on its social media handle. Of the four new cases, three of them are in Lagos, while one is in the nation's capital, Abuja. Two of the cases are set to be returning travelers. A breakdown of the confirmed cases show that Lagos now has 28, the FCT 7, Ogun State 2, Ekiti Oyo and Edo State with one case each. Now, some of the measures the information minister asked Nigerians to brace up for have been announced by the federal government. They include a four-week closure of all land borders for human traffic as part of government strategies to limiting the spread of COVID-19 in the country. Besides the closure of land borders, the weekly Federal Executive Council meeting, FEC, uh, government has also been suspended indefinitely. Secretary to the government of the Federation, Mr. Boss Mustafa, announced a decision at a news conference in Abuja, signed in the recent surge in numbers of the confirmed cases of COVID-19. He maintains that government will enforce strict compliance with the social distancing policy. After a further review, Mr. President, on the recommendation of the Presidential Task Force, has approved the following additional measures. One, Suspension of the weekly Federal Executive Council meetings until further notice. Two, postponement of the meeting of the Council of State, which was scheduled to take place on Thursday, the 26th of March, 2020. Three, all land borders that have been hitherto under partial closure shall now be closed for human traffic for four weeks, effective today, the 23rd of March, 2020. In order to protect federal civil and public servants, a circular will be issued by the head of service of the Federation and shall direct on actions to be taken immediately. This evening, the head of service would work on a circular which she will release that will give us an indication of how we would proceed in dealing with the federal civil service and the public officers in the engagement of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. All Abuja and Lagos residents are strongly advised to stay at home, avoid mass congregation of any kind, as well as non-essential outings until further notice or advice is given. And now to another arm of government, the judiciary. The Chief Justice of Nigeria has directed all heads of courts to suspend all court sittings with effect from Tuesday, March the 24th, for an initial period of two weeks. A statement signed by the Chief Justice, uh, Ibrahim Mohamed, says only uh, matters rather that are urgent, essential or time-bound according to the nation's extant laws will be entertained. The CGN explains in an earlier statement that all federal judicial bodies are expected to continue continue working while ensuring that members of the public coming for official matters, meetings or conferences do not exceed the recommended number of 50. In the face of recent COVID-19 statistics, the federal government is asking Nigerians to brace up for tougher measures in its efforts to curtail the spread <clears throat> excuse me, of the pandemic. Now, addressing a news conference, the Minister for Information and Culture, Mr. Lai Mohammed, says government is prepared to take any necessary measure for contact tracing. He warns that over 1,000 contacts of confirmed cases are yet to be traced and asks Nigerians to be prepared for the worst. We should be ready for tougher measures. The form is going to take would come out in about a day, either before the end of today or by tomorrow. But clearly, Nigerians should be ready for tougher measures. And the federal government will not shy away from, you know, making declarations that is going to help us, even if it means, you know, not that it's an executive order. Like I said, uh, 
by the end of today, I'm uh, sure, later by tomorrow, there uh, will be certain uh, decisions that will be announced by the uh, presidential task force on COVID 19. And uh, I won't rule out the possibility of restriction uh, in respect of uh, civil servants or other public servants. And I think already many states have done so. If you travel, you come back, you should maybe go to self isolation. And I can assure you that the government we are ready and willing to enforce this self isolation whatever it is. Well, we get a sense of what we need to do more in such a time as this. Joining us as a panel via our Buja studio, joining us is Mr. Gaba Abari, the Director General of the National Orientation Agency. And we also have Mr. Mukta Imam, who is a policy and governance expert. I'd like to thank you both gentlemen uh, for joining us at this time. I'd like to begin uh, with uh, you, um, Dr. Abari, and this is with comments coming from our efforts coming from the federal government. Uh, we hear the Minister of Information on that. Uh, are we, as it stands, on COVID-19 in Nigeria? Is Nigeria in a state of emergency? I th uh, good afternoon, everyone. I think um, uh, all the measures already being put uh, in place by the government uh, are measures that are aimed at ensuring that we prevent and contain the spread of the virus. Uh, one basic reality is here, the virus is in Nigeria. We have even recorded the first case of death from it yesterday. You could see the number, the numbers are increasing gradually. And this is actually an issue that should give each and every one, one of us um, a sense of concern. And the uh, government uh, definitely is giving the lead by putting all the necessary measures uh, to ensure that we not only get ourselves prevented, but we also contain the spread of the virus. And of course, all the measures that have been uh, put in place are measures that are uh, uh, are being guided by advisory issued by the relevant clinical agencies, by experiences from other parts of the world, and of course, uh, in response to our own peculiar social uh, uh, setting. Uh, by and large, uh, all the measures put in place uh, should be observed and observed religiously by all Nigerians. Uh, the, the efforts of the subnational uh, units as we can see from yesterday, are also quite encouraging because many of the state governments are working up to their responsibilities and putting in place all the necessary facilities, medical facilities required. However, the most important issue here is the, uh, the quantum of information that should get to the citizens, the quantum of correct information that should get to the citizens on how to stay safe. When one individual stays safe, he or she is also keeping the other away from harm. Um, uh, uh, unfortunately, there are still some flashpoints of uh, uh, groups and the individuals who still feel uh, uh, that everything uh, is, is, is normal and they are going about their, their businesses uh, uh, and, and, uh, as if in normal times. But well, these are not actually normal times. That is why extraordinary measures are being taken, extra normal uh, steps are being taken. And we call on each and every Nigeria to begin to please own this uh, effort to contain and to, pre to prevent from, uh, the, uh, uh, from catching the disease and to contain its spread by having a public ownership of uh, uh, these efforts. So staying with all of this you've said, um, there's still a lot of talk about sensitization not getting to a lot of people 
such as the rural or remote areas, certain people who still do not believe that COVID-19 is a big threat and that it is in Nigeria. What has the NOA done in um, perhaps sensitizing Nigerians? A lot, actually, a lot. We started even much earlier than even before the coming of the index of the index case. Uh, do not forget that the NOA was already on the field synthesizing on NASA or NASA fever when the coronavirus saga came in, and so we streamlined the synthesization. Our first major uh, attempt is to actually get the preventive measures from the National Center for Disease Control. These preventive measures and the steps were translated into different Nigerian languages, into Hausa, into Yoruba, into Igbo, into, into, into Pidgin, into Efik, into other languages. And uh, we, we ask all our state directors, directors to do the same and also ask our local community mobilization officers to do the same. That's one. Secondly, we were instrumental to getting all the six ministries of health to actually begin the setting up of the uh, uh, response team because the NOA was given the feeding the Ministry of Information uh, all the measures that have that have been taken in place that that, that have been taking place and and all the measures that have been put in place in order to make sure that people are aware of the reality. However, the 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 the, the main focus for the NOA now is actually to step up synthesization and the advocacy in areas where in areas where the disease now exists. Okay, so hold on, because, hold, hold that thought, uh, hold that thought, because I must quickly get the view of the second guest in the studio there, and that is uh, Mr. Imam. Thank you again. Um, considering the figures this morning, we have a number of opinions that some of these measures are coming in a little too late. Is the federal government, the state government, are they prepared for the worst? Um, thank you very much. Um, so this is um, a natural hazard. Um, preparedness would have to be consistent as we go on in the battle um, of curbing this uh, global pandemic. Um, having said that, uh, to lay some foundation to this, um, the thing about pandemics or epidemic um, is that the first measure, as it is universally acceptable, is quarantine to be able to contain. That's the first containment measure that must be taken. So at ab initio, when this um, pandemic broke out in Wuhan in China, the initial step that should have been taken would have been to quarantine or quarantine. Um, there's a need to curb this by not allowing people who are not in the affected area not to come in. And of course, those who are, have been affected or are within that affected area not to go out. Uh, but what we saw was the direct opposite of that. Multilateralism began to fall. Countries began to talk about evacuating their citizens from Wuhan in China and so on and so forth. And that has led us to where we are. To the here and now, um, given that this virus has gone this far, um, ideally measures that should have been taken by government, um, and I believe by this statement, that we should have taken these measures longer or uh, earlier than now. The Nigerian government should have shut down its borders. Um, before now, prior to this point in time. Um, the reason why this is so is because we must consider our uh, demographics, we must consider the, uh, the existing um, infrastructural or available infrastructure, particularly as it affects health. Well, just before we continue with our discussions, uh, talking about the issue and the response uh, strategy of the federal government, let's perhaps take you through a list of um, some of the strategies of the federal government and some of the states in the management of COVID-19 in Nigeria. We have several of them, starting with the indefinite suspension of FEC meetings uh, yesterday, ordering the total closure of land borders, of course, shorting uh, several airports, Lagos, Abuja, Port Harcourt, Enugu, Kano, to international flights, uh, several measures with the Central Bank of Nigeria cutting interest rates to 5%, the reduction of petrol pump price to 125 naira. Uh, some stakeholders believe that perhaps that uh, should be lower. Uh, travel ban on about 15 countries, cancelling visa on a arrival, uh, several measures, the National Assembly, for example, saying that 
Senate uh, to suspend public hearings, the ban of receiving visitors in the National Assembly. And of course, the Senate have asked the president to address the nation on COVID-19. That is still yet to be seen. Other measures taken by some state governments include the NGF setting up subcommittees to review the trend and also advise the state governments on the economy. The Northwest governors shutting down schools, Lagos, other state governments, religious bodies agreeing to suspend over 50 gatherings for four weeks. Some are cutting that to about 20. And of course, uh, more measures on all schools stay at home for 14 days. Some others have been told till further notice. So that's a bit about the national response strategy and management of COVID-19. Uh, we've been talking with our guests in Abuja studio, Mr. Gaba uh, Abari, the Director General of the National Orientation Agency and also policy governance expert, Mr. Mukta Imam. Imam, let's continue with your thought on this because, um, you know, you've been talking about you, you, you don't quite agree with the, the measures that have been taking so far and you, you're saying that perhaps more measures should have been taking a little earlier. Um, we have people like the World Economic Forum saying that governments have to bring out the big artillery uh, to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, this is also a view that you share. Yes, of course it is. Um, well, um, just to correct a bit of impression there, um, not that I do not agree with the position of the government or, that the, or the measures that the government have taken. My position is that it should have come a little earlier than it's already, I mean, that it, than it has. Uh, reason being that, I mean, when you look at the statistics, for example, um, it is evidently clear, uh, as stated by the World Health Organization, that there is one doctor, one medical doctor to about 2,000, if not more, patients in Nigeria. This is um, on a very good day um, without this pandemic or epidemic in spread. And then, of course, you also look at the bed spacing ratio. You will find that there is about five, um, thereabouts, between five and 10 beddings to over 10,000 persons. Now, in a country with this kind of ailing health sector, um, there would have been the need for the government to intervene timely, much more timelier than they have. Having said that, all hope is not lost. The government has intervened, we're seeing schools closed down, we're seeing international flight cancelled and all of that. But the government needs to do a lot more. Institutions have to be proactive. For example, the Minister of Health was um, on the pages of some newspapers saying he doesn't understand what the enemy is doing. We should not see this kind of discrepancies. As a matter of fact, there should be a lot more collaboration, joined up thinking uh, by institutions that are directly involved in this situation. This is a catastrophe we're faced with. And so there's the need for a lot more to be done, hands on. Um, uh, speaking about the economy, as a matter of fact, um, um, th there have been critics who have talked about how the earlier shutdown of borders and so on and so forth, land and air ball, um, um, closure would have affected the economy grossly. That is true. There is no doubt about that. These things are intertwined. But the reality is this, that if we consistently move along this path, considering just economic um, um, consequences of this uh, pandemic, of this crisis we have at hand, um, in the coming the next few years, God forbid, we, or a few months, we might not even have, have an economy to be talking about. All so right, there is the need to first and foremost, as a matter of fact, there is no better time than now to understand that health is actually wealth. So the government's intervention is very timely, but a lot more needs to be done. The National Orientation done. Agency, thank God the DG is here, has to do a lot more by not just sensitizing individuals using the media platforms and so on. We need to let's, look let's at Let's quickly get the, the view of the DG, have, just because we're running a little short of time. And uh, Mr. Uh, Bari, the, the Presidential Economic Advisory Council says Nigeria would have to work hard to keep its head above water, it's talking about um, the economic troubles that we face in, line of, uh, in light of COVID-19. And there are also fears, global fears of economic recession. And perhaps we're, we're also supposed to take a closer look at what we need to do. We're hearing um, investors are losing a lot of money since the first index case uh, in January. So what more will you be telling Nigerians to allay their fears and to trust that these measures of the federal government and perhaps the health personnel, the NCDC are working at indeed containing the spread of COVID-19. Well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's very true that, uh, that uh, the, the, the pandemic is also throwing up its own uh, challenges on the economic front. But the most important thing is first and foremost for all institutions 
government agencies, uh, relevant stakeholders, all to come together and work in the same direction. Uh, the issue is not about stocks coming down. It's not about investors losing money. This is something that is so peculiar to Nigeria alone. It has affected all the economies of the world, uh, of the countries where the pandemic has actually availed itself. And I think uh, so far, uh, the, the, the measures being put in place uh, are sufficient. Perhaps we may go a little, uh, uh, we, we, we may go a little notch up to, to, to tighten some of the, 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 policy, the okay. policy issues, especially in respect to monetary and fiscal policies, with a view to ensuring that the economy does not actually suffer the kind of meltdown that will drastically, subsequently uh, uh, affect growth and development. Unfortunately, we're, we're out of time, um, DG. Yeah. We'd like to thank you, Mr. Gaba Abari, DG, uh, National Orientation Agency, and Mr. Mukta Ibrahim, Policy Governance Expert. Thank you both for talking to us at this time. We know that, of course, the sensitization continues out of the studio. Many thanks again uh, to all the stories, all regular regular and non-essential activities of political parties, including the monitoring of ongoing state congresses across the country have been suspended by INEC. In a statement, uh, the electoral agency says the National Commissioner and Chairman of Information and Voter Education Committee, Mr. Fester Sakoye, explains that the decision is to help the Commission prevent the spread of COVID-19. The statement also says that the measures taken by the electoral umpire will not affect activities embarked upon by the Commission as it prepares for elections in Edo and Ondo states. The Benue state government says it has again uncovered another set of about 3,640 ghost workers in the 23 local councils of the state following a physical headcount ca uh, conducted late 2019. The chairman of the state local government service commission, while presenting the audit report uh, to Governor Samuel Otom at the government house in Makadi, says over 14,000 staff out of 18,000 employees' records submitted by the council to the commission could be verified and accounted for, uh, lamenting the damage done to the public service and its attendant effect on genuine works. Governor Tom vowed to seek an end to the manipulation and criminal activities of fraudulent payroll management syndicates. Well, that's it on the program this afternoon. We'd like to thank you for watching. I'm Millicent Walker. Of course, our website, www.channelcv, has the latest updates and our stories. I'll see you soon.